Hi, Keith. Hi. So here we are again. We find right. ourselves here again. <laughs> Somehow it keeps happening. <laughs> yeah. And um, we thought it would be fun to explore a topic that a lot of people are thinking about this time of year, which is gratitude. And uh, the way we think about it, how we relate to it, um, some different aspects of it that that we find interesting. So I guess my first thought for today is to ask you what, how would you describe your relationship to gratitude and how do you relate to that, that concept or that experience? Uh, it's a great question. So I think that right now from myself, I'm relate to gratitude differently than I did a long time ago. I, I would say right now that it's very important to me to practice returning into the experience of gratitude and to holding myself accountable as much as I can to when I'm not feeling grateful to finding my way back. And I don't think that that was my practice for most of my life around gratitude. I think that I did some more, I mean, almost like a more religious tone around gratitude that it's like, you know, there's something bad if you're not feeling grateful and it's like you should be grateful, a should be grateful thing. Um, so just, you know, say you're grateful. I've done that, but like, I don't think that most of my adult life I actually like held myself accountable that it's actually important to get back to gratitude. So right now my relationship to gratitude is that I've actually elevated, seriously elevated the importance of returning to a state of gratitude when I'm not feeling grateful and recognizing that the experience of gratitude is, um, is really the only way I can be present. If I'm not experiencing gratitude, I don't I think it's a little, it's hard to be present if I'm not experiencing, if I'm not grateful for my experience, it's hard to be present to the experience because then I want it to go away. I'll stop there. There's a lot to say about presence and gratitude, but how about you? What are, how are you relating to gratitude these days? Well, I have one follow-up before I move over. Sure. I'm happy to speak about it myself, but something you said got my attention, which is, um, that there was a change in you around your relationship with it a few a few years ago, maybe. And I'm wondering if you could speak to that and what happened there. You know, it's probably related to becoming a father uh, when that change happened, because that's when it happened. And I think it may also be related to my age for myself, um, 47. I think that at some point, I recently, in the last number of years, I recognized that if I can't be grateful during my day or in experience, um, then I'm missing out on a lot of time in my life where I'm wishing, like the opposite of grateful, right? Which is whatever that is for each person. For me, the opposite of grateful is uh, I, I don't want the thing to be happening. That's happening. I don't want my experience to be happening. I'm not, I'm not thankful and grateful for it. I'm not embracing it. So I think I realized that gr gratitude is a barometer that I'm actually um, really feeling thankful for the experience. And so I think something about the birth of my daughter sped that up for me. That it's like, well, if I can't be grateful now, uh, and whatever else, career success, there's other factors here. But if I can't be grateful now, I'm never going to be grateful. Like there's nothing coming in the future that's going to allow me to be grateful. That's what I think the reality that's set in for me in the last few years. There's nothing new coming in the future that's going to finally be like, now I'm grateful. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. it makes sense that becoming a father definitely uh, puts you in a different position in that relationship yeah 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 I think what's your bit what's yeah what's your relationship been over whatever your adulthood 
and then now, like, what is it now or about mm-hmm. gratitude? Well, I think when I was a very young person, um, gratitude came in waves a lot for me. I remember being in stepping into states of gratitude very easily, especially when I was um, in wilderness, like growing up in Tennessee and being in the woods, I was instantly grateful. And then things got more complicated as I grew up. And I think I was like most people in a kind of more passive relationship with gratitude and enjoying the experience, but not cultivating it, not committing to it, not generating it, not taking responsibility for it. And that went on for a long time. And then I can't remember where I came across a teaching about taking responsibility for creating gratitude and actually choosing that and doing practices to increase um, the time spent in gratitude. And But it was a few years ago, and I'm not as disciplined about it as I would like to be, to be honest. I my wife is good at reminding me, uh, Hey, let's do that gratitude practice this morning. And I think that happened today, actually, this morning, we were listing off things we're grateful about. And it seems like a really important connection that you were making between presence and gratitude. That if I'm not in a state of gratitude that I'm subtly or not so subtly rejecting what is already happening. And there's tension that goes with that. And this bigger sense of missing out on on life, missing out on the moment by moment gifts that the present is a corny metaphor, but you know, <laughs> the gift that the present is, right? Um yeah, you're you're actually pointing something out that I. What I'm thinking here now, as you said that, is that there's sort of, there's many ways we could talk about this, but there's one distinction, which is there's sort of gratitude practices, like saying grace. We were talking about this earlier today. Saying grace, like a lot of people say grace with it's a gratitude practice, right? Like that's a part of grace for a lot of people, um, and that's a particular thing like where you do things and you do practices to exercise gratitude and that's interesting but i think something really interesting to me to talk about today is more about well doing practice when you notice you're not in gratitude and what do you do and the practices where you're not in a state of gratitude uh and so i'm curious about that uh conversation is really going into like, you know, for you, let me ask you a question about this. So when you're not in gratitude, are you, does some part of you want to get back to gratitude or is it just like gone? It's not even in your filter at that point. And you're just like, I'd rather stay ungrateful. (laughs) Well, it what it feels like to me in my system is that ungrateful state is a expensive state to be in energetically mm-hmm. because i can feel the stress and the tension in my body and my mind and there can be a an attachment to complaint or feeling aggrieved or you know just generally not appreciating what's happening I can feel attached to that, but I think to answer your question deep down, there's always a desire that I can find if I look to get into a lower, uh, a less expensive energy state where there's less um, tension and less stress and more joy, you know, more, more flow, more fluidity in my system. It'd be interesting, and there's probably no data on this, but it'd be very interesting to know the average person. Let's just call us the average person for a moment. Like, how often do we go into experiences throughout any given day where we're not grateful? 
right? And how how often is that happening? And how often is that happening for many people? And I mean, I would say for myself, it's happening probably daily. Um, do you know? Do I go through a full day where I'm just full, two feet in, grateful every single second of the day? Probably not. Um, that's probably not happening. And then, you know, how often is it happening for me? I don't know. I think I have waves where it's happening often and waves where it's not. Um, what about you? Do you feel like it's a daily thing where you could probably find a moment where you're not grateful? <laughs> <laughs> I just, I spend way too much time outside of gratitude. <laughs> you're right. Too much yeah. time. Are you grateful right now? <laughs> I am grateful right now. Yeah, I, I think I, I am uh, too. Yeah. And, you know, there's this kind of weird um, baseline. It's not weird, really, because I know mostly where it comes from, but this overlay or this personality um, pattern of of stress that is, I, I know it's not like um, primordial or part of awareness itself but it is definitely a part of a, a lens where I'm, I'm i find myself scanning for stressful data that i can get my teeth you know bitten down into so yeah it's it's like the uh the mind the psyche the ego believes not being grateful is a very effective attitude right and and it's it's like we go into these states all the time and there's some belief and a nervous system overwhelmed that it's almost like not even always discursive thinking but when there is that thinking there's sort of like an unconscious thought pattern of like this is effective gratitude would not be effective right now right mm -hmm. gratitude we won't get what we want if we become grateful in this moment I mean, I probably have many, many fights with my wife where probably hundreds or thousands where I go into this attitude in myself where it's like, if I get grateful in this moment, I won't get what I want. Yeah. If I stay ungrateful for this exchange, if I just take the example with my wife, uh, maybe... Um, you know, maybe she'll see that um, I'm right and I'll get what I want or something I, primitive like that, right? Like, I don't even know. I, I That's a one example is like a fight with my partner. But um, there's sort of an attitude when we're not grateful that staying ungrateful is a faster path to getting what we want than going into gratitude. For me, it feels similar but a little different it's like i feel more vulnerable uh if i'm in a state of gratitude like i'm i'm more open more receptive i'm less defended i think some part of my ego feels safer uh in a mild state of stress all the time yeah and obviously i'm i'm working my therapy to overcome that pattern but it's still it's still alive in me for sure yeah i like that you said that it's expensive to energetically to be in a state that's not grateful right it's it's a contraction of some sort it's uh typically an agitation in the nervous system or even a collapse in the nervous system right it's not typically a relaxed open nervous system that's not grateful so it's expensive yeah. on the body yeah and it for me it's also connect, connected with um perceiving more drawbacks than benefits to begin and to you know quoting one of our teachers john d martini this issue about emotions coming from imbalanced perceptions and and for me the security of paying attention to threat in the environment more than paying attention to support in the environment or resource in the environment creates this imbalance 
which is stressful. Yeah, there's um, this drawback benefit thing. There's also this element with that of uh, when we're, I think there's a perception that if we become grateful and challenging experience, encounter externally, and we become grateful for that experience, there's probably a underlying belief that we're losing control if we become grateful. We're losing our sense of controlling the experience once we become grateful to it. And we're potentially it could happen again if we don't clap down, right? Um, so for me, there's probably an element of control when I'm not grateful of I'm trying to control the course going in a different direction than the experience went in. You know, I mean, that could be like, you know, you're not grateful for the flat tire you got on the road, right? That could be... Right. Um, even more dramatic would be like you get an offender vendor and you're not grateful for that, right? You're like, I can't believe that happened. And you're now in a mild road rage incident with the other driver. Um, right. Uh, I mean, obviously there's so many experiences all day long that people have sh- challenges, rightfully so, becoming grateful for. Um, but it, there's some element of control in there when I think about it for myself. Uh, when I'm not grateful of, I feel like I need to control and clamp down to make sure this doesn't happen in the same way again. Yeah, there's a quality of submission to the moment or what's being presented to our senses. Uh, That word submission, I think for me, kind of explains a little bit of what my ego is, how my ego relates to these more open states. There's a a fear of annihilation or threat or something that comes from letting go of trying to control the the moment. Right. And gratitude is 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 trust. There is a yielding to go into a state of gratitude when there's a challenging experience in front of us. Uh, so there's, there's sort of like a yielding and, uh, it's not necessarily submission, but there's a trust that if we appreciate our life in the moment, we get the flat tire. There's a trust that, um, living in this place of not right or wrong and living in a different space of appreciation but it doesn't mean we become apathetic and just, you know, we're like, we're just sort of going through life as a passive bystander and getting beaten and we're just like, give me another one, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's interesting to think about ambition and and a drive and trying to accomplish goals from a place of gratitude and from a place of trusting the process. Well, I think about when I think about practices, you know, we, we, I started talking about this with the example of saying grace and that there's often gratitude, essentially gratitude rituals in, in that practice. And There's gratitude rituals with Thanksgiving coming up for a lot of people. There's gratitude rituals embedded in different places in culture. Um, When I think about a practice of having gratitude in a moment that's very challenging, that, that for me is about when we're grateful for a challenge, often the thing that I have to go to to get back into gratitude is looking how the challenge is still supporting my life in some way and where I'm, where I see myself going. Right. And I have to find that in the challenge or else I feel like it's not supporting the direction of my life and it's actually stopping the, where I want my life to go. And then that's, you can't be grateful for that. It's not, you can't be grateful for an experience that you feel like is stopping you from achieving what you want. It's really hard to be grateful for that because You don't find meaning in that. Right. Right. Yeah. And I I think um, 
I think you're so right about that. I think the desire to get somewhere in our lives, where, wherever that destination is, if our path is being blocked by X, Y, or Z, we're not going to feel grateful for that, not initially. Not unless we can discover the ways that that challenge benefit us. Right. It reminds me of this um, Dogen quote that's well known, you know, 12th century Buddhist monk. He said, the path is the goal. You know, parenthetically, the destination is not the goal. So, the you know, the practice of dropping the story that this thing is in the way and getting back into the perspective this is on the way is something that helps right. helps me quite a bit when when i get stuck in those moments yeah so there's a cognitive practice that does sometimes help me which is what we're talking about and it's cognitive exercise and if i take the example of traffic to stick with the sort of flat tire example right and i th and i and this is very common you get an unexpected traffic right many people don't relax in that situation many people immediately see that as this is slowing me down from where i was supposed to be that's a very common thing right with traffic it's like okay this is actually this just slowed me down on my path to fulfillment and where I'm supposed to be. Traffic is slowing me down in a way where it actually is slowing me down from achieving my goal for that moment. And, you know, I've definitely used some cognitive, co more cognitive based practices there of like, well, how is it actually getting me closer to my goal? How's the traffic getting me closer to my goal? And let's say my goal is I'm with my wife and we're going out on a date. And this happens to me. She's in, you know, going along, it's traffic. She doesn't think anything of it. And I'm like, damn it. I'm like, what's going on here? And, and as soon as like she points out to me, like, well, it just slowed us down. We get to now connect without the noise of the restaurant. <laughs> Maybe more time for that. I'm like, oh, like, well, part of the goal is connection. And, you know, sometimes traffic slows us down and we can have contemplation about something. So there is the cognitive exercise of looking for how the, the challenge that we perceive or, you know, sometimes it's not just a perception. Sometimes we're getting very painful situations and stimuli at us um, that are really painful physically. How that is on the way to our vision for our life. And so there's the simple cognitive exercise of asking that question. Some, some certain uh, situations are much harder to find the answer in. Right. I'm, I'm reminded of this. Um concept of post-traumatic growth and how many people I've seen who I worked with who got who got to a place in their passage through a difficult situation, a traumatic event, where on the other side of it, they came into a state of gratitude for the event. And that was yeah. when we knew that the work was finished with the integration process. Right. And, and that yeah. Yeah. So many of us, I think, and I'm one of these, you know, one of the people missing those moments, missing those opportunities. Well, you know, trauma is an interesting um, thing to bring into this, right? Because when we're traumatized, we're not grateful for the event that happened. You can't be grateful and traumatized, right? It's not, it's like in some ways, an aspect of trauma is being ungrateful and not wanting the event to have have happened and feeling like the event has now ruined your life in some way um or slowed you down or you know, you know so it's and then what we do see in post traumatic growth is people who integrate the experiences tend to be grateful not wishing the experience happened or happens again but they tend to be grateful for their life 
and that this was an aspect of their life and something comes out of it for them. And it's a very common experience in the integration of trauma. Right. It's when you, you realize and appreciate that without having been through that trauma, you wouldn't be who, who you are today. And right. the fact that you love who you are today has to, by definition, include that how you were changed by that trauma. Yeah. And this opens up, you know, when we talk about trauma, it opens up the more extreme end of the types of challenging experiences that um, we would be ungrateful for in our life. But if we can't extend gratitude to all of our life and all of our experiences, then the whole concept falls apart. And then it's like, when are you going to pick and choose that there's a reason to be grateful? The whole thing falls apart. If you can't extend the concept to your entire life, then the, the practice will never hold into the future because your future will, not, will have all kinds of related associations and all kinds of things that you're not grateful for. So for me, the gratitude um, practice is, you know, I think I did a lot of my therapy was first appreciating my life, you know, and then looking for the challenging experiences where I didn't and trying, trying to get to the result of therapy for me was appreciating that experience over time. And my life had very challenging, complex experiences, but different than a lot of people, you know, the form was different. and but it had plenty of trauma in it. And I think that when you have a lot of, let's just call it internal trauma, let's not talk about the actual experience and the events of what those are. When you have a lot of internal trauma and you work through those, um, gratitude becomes more important because you're very acutely aware when you've had a lot of trauma and you've worked through it when you're not grateful. Because people have had a lot of trauma before they work through it, lived a lot of their time not grateful mm -hmm. and in a, in a state of confusion and agitation and anxiety. Um, even if there's some gratitude there, it's not, you know, my experience of what gratitude is, is a deeply relaxing state of trust that um, this life is the biggest blessing you can have in the moment. That's gratitude for me. Like, thank you. Being able to just say thank you for the moment. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's no alternative moment happening in parallel with the one that we're in. Yeah. There's no better one. Right. And then there's the moments where we can't say thank you. And we have a lot of those as humans. And you know, again, I just go into this. It's so interesting that we believe that the path to freedom is holding on to not being able to say thank you. You know, maybe that's a path to freedom for somebody, but it's not the path to saying thank you. It's not the path to saying thank you for this moment. It's some other path if we hold on to that and never want to get to thank you. I don't know that it's a path to freedom. I mean, it's, it's a path to security and familiarity. Right. And, um, you know, holding on to your, your, your guns and building your walls and. Yeah. Which is totally a valid place to be sometimes. Sure. In fact, sometimes it's probably valid to not be in a thank you. Right. And, you know, when you're fighting for survival or you feel like you're fighting for survival, you, one of those two experiences, you're right. Like protection self-preservation and protection makes sense of course yeah 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 i mean the the context really matters in that regard the problem context is that so many of us yeah i mean so many of us are walking around in that state of um self-defense on some subtle unconscious level that isn't accurate to the current context that's right yeah. And, and, you know, a lot of people are walking around not being able to say thank you for the moment. Um, and it's interesting of like, well, what's required to be able to say thank you for a moment, right? Like, is basic needs required to be able to say thank you? Maybe. 
right? We're probably, if we're probably too overwhelmed and not having basic needs met, that pain stimuli, stimuli is probably too high for almost anyone to be able to say thank you for that moment if it's too high. Yeah, it, it depends, I guess, on on the person's background and training. It you know reminds me again of another Buddhist story about um, monks and um, coming out of Chinese prison and meeting with the Dalai Lama. And he said, "What was your biggest fear in the prison?" And he said, "Losing my gratitude for the Chinese, losing my compassion for the Chinese." That was my biggest challenge. As I was being electrocuted, it's my biggest fear. Right. So, uh, kind of an extreme example of um, someone who maybe was able to stay at times, anyway, in a state of gratitude. Yeah. While, yeah. While in extreme, I think it's totally possible for anyone anywhere to enter a state of gratitude. I mean, we s- see that in. Victor Frankl's Holocaust account of how he was able to go into that place. And, um, and I think that, you know, that is harder to do when pain stimuli and deprivation is going on. It's harder to get there for many people. Um, but the thing is, is that many people are not in that level of a situation. And we still have trouble getting there. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Right? So it's not necessarily like basic survival for many people where like, I'm not going to, I don't know where I'm going to get my water. There's that going on on the planet. I don't know where I'm ever going to get food again. Again, we have some of that going on on the planet too. There's still a lot of people that don't have food. But then there's all these people that are going to get their meal and they're going to have water. Uh and many people who even have a shelter and they still, so basic needs are met, physical. And uh, and then there's all other layers that are a threat to survival in ourselves of systems of oppression and all kinds of things. And it's we have a lot of reasons in ourselves of why going into a state of gratitude, um, either we don't deserve it or it's unsafe, right? To go into a state of gratitude. Yeah, we don't deserve it. It's unsafe. Um, it could also not be fair. unconscious. It could be an unconscious. Pro- yeah, it's not fair. Uh, programming from our childhood around what it means to be grateful. Um, right. What what the associations are. There can be a lot of unconscious. Just. Uh, procedural memory just kind of like driving our daily experience without much uh awareness yeah and the thing is i mean i know we're going to wrap up here in a minute my experience through and through at this point is the the most the greatest gift you could ever give yourself is to get back into a state of gratitude it's one of the greatest gifts you can ever give yourself no matter what's going on, because the state of gratitude floods you with self-love and and feeling, you know, just um, internal pleasure comes from gratitude, and it's a, a, a big openness versus feeling small and closed. So, a state of entering into a state of gratitude is a gift that you can give yourself. That uh, even when people are trying to take that from you. Yeah, and it, it's it's a balancing of of signaling in the body, as well. It's a huge gift to your yourself, your your being, um, but it's also a, a huge gift to your your physical body. And I think it's also a relational gift that you can give to the people around you. It's some um, much more um, generous to be in a state of gratitude. Right. You have, you have I think so. Offer people. Yeah. And I think too, just as we wrap up, you know, being in a state of gratitude for myself, it doesn't mean we don't have boundaries. It doesn't mean we don't have preferences. It doesn't mean we, we can't say no in a state of gratitude. I mean, it doesn't mean any of that. 
Uh, it just means that we're actually grateful to have that moment of life. We might be grateful to have the moment of life while we're like, no, don't do this to me, whatever it is. Um, but that we're grateful we get to be alive in that moment and taking mm-hmm. the experience, even though the experience might be challenging, right? So I think that's that's where some people can sometimes get confused that somehow gratitude means, you know, you're you have no boundaries or um yeah. Mm-hmm. Right, that you're going to allow somebody with um, bad intentions for you to do whatever they want to you. Right, because you're grateful for them. <laughs> yeah. I think the, the important thing is that it's it's about being grateful for the experience and what the experience showed you. Mm-hmm. Agreed. All right. Should we wrap up there? Well, thank you. Thank you. <laughs>